Bulavinaka. 2020 marks the 50th anniversary of Fiji independence and the centenary of the abolition of indentured labour. Our story starts with sugarcane, here at the Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew in London. Seedlings were transported all around the world. For so most of the 19th century, Kew's principal purpose was economic botany. In other words, understanding plants that were of value, rubber, chinchona, sugar. And much of our work was around distributing these plants around the world for the British Empire. So Kew's had a long history in economic botany, and we continue to do that in a contemporary sense. But telling the full story of our history in the 19th and 20th centuries is a really important challenge for us now. As the great-grandson of an indentured labourer who travelled from a small village in central India to the island of Fiji in the South Pacific over a century ago, I brought together a collective of artists, academics, educators and technologists to create a multi-dimensional arts project that retells the human story of indentured labour by bringing together the past into the present in order to reshape the future. From pen to paper, we start with one dimension, a graphic novel, a story through the eyes of a 10-year-old of our indentured superheroes. By recording the sound of plants, we listen to and feel the sonics of the sugarcane plant by connecting back to the source of indentured labour, the sugarcane plant itself. Through virtual reality, we immerse ourselves into the 360-degree world of the Girimitia. What underpins our project is the oral histories. We hear first-hand accounts from men, women and children, the ancestors of our indentured labourers. So these are the stories of men, women and children. They are individual stories of people who travelled from India across continents and we need to see them as people, as individuals, not as nameless groups of labourers. Girmit, through the lens of art and heritage, tells the story of change, of connectivity and the complexity of the human spirit. In order to understand the context of indenture better, here at the National Archives, we're able to read documents of the period and start to piece together the facts and details that led to indenture. Girmit comes from the word agreement and agreements like this documented the name, place of birth, occupation, next of kin and faith and allows us an insight into the early lives of these individuals. The National Archives are the official archive of the UK government and we hold records going back um, a thousand years. Those records belong to the nation and they help us to, to tell its stories. So the role of the National Archives is to um, collect, to preserve, to keep safe those records and um, importantly, we believe that archives are for everyone and that's because they're about everyone. So um, they're about people in the past, they're about people in the present and importantly, they're about the future too. And so an important part of our role is to make those archives accessible to everyone, wherever they are. The National Archives has over a thousand years of this country's history and within it we contain some fascinating and important files about the story of indentured labour. These histories of indentured labour, of the contracting, of the employment, of the transportation, are available for global audiences, audiences that can access them at any time, anywhere in the world. Our collection is one important perspective on this story, but if it's complemented through collaboration with others and other record types, parliamentary records, records in other national archives, oral histories, that enriches the whole and brings the whole jigsaw together in an important way. So oral history is about bringing out the individual stories and the emotional sides of people's memories. You can come to an archive of this kind and find incredibly valuable resources that will tell you a lot of information about how many people left to go to Fiji or the companies that were involved in the indentured labour process but you wouldn't find very much about the emotional side. What was driving people to try and find a new life, to start a new life? What challenges did people face when they arrived? What were their living conditions like? What friendships did they make? What was the work that they were doing like? What impact did that have on them? And that's hopefully what the oral histories will bring out for this project. I think rather than facts and figures, what we're really interested in is a feeling. So we're interested in connecting with uh, young people 
on an emotional level. If you make that con- if you make that emotional connection with young people, they are far more likely to remember learning about that period in history than if you're just talking facts and figures. So it's really important that we hang this on real life experiences and we tell real life stories. So we're absolutely delighted to be um, working on this project with Nautilus. Um, which is obviously around the wider story of indentured people. And this partnership actually is um, a great example of how archives can be a resource to bring people and communities together. Working in partnership, you can often reach communities um, that may not be familiar with archives um, and and obviously widen our, our audience and share those stories more widely. So we do have this important collection of records which Um, relate to Indian indenture um, both in terms of uh, individual colonies and in terms of how the system actually worked. So on the one hand you've got these administrative records which give us a very good idea of some of the bigger picture of this history. Um, For example the kind of numbers and scale of this part of history, people being transported from India to the colonies. But then on the other hand we've also got some records which allow researchers to look at individual human stories. So we go from the sort of bigger picture history right down to the personal stories. Um, And I think that this project is something that can help us to look at both of those angles and to to share those things more widely with people for whom uh, this this may be really relevant as part of their identity or their history. Documents, data and the social and political motivations alongside the human story underpins the story of Girmit. Girmit is a global story, a story with its roots in London, a story of progress and change for a better life. The goal of the story was to unite a team of artists with different skills, using emerging technology. We wanted it to inspire within all generations that the technology around them can be used to tell stories in new ways. And the great thing about this project is collaboration. And and as we know, you can't do everything on your own. And so working across the world with Fiji and working with classically trained artists from the RCA, Patrick, and up and coming artists like Lorna, and then Snooks from Subpack. That was the whole idea to bring a really diverse group of artists together and make something that you really get to feel it. The Girmitia experienced change quickly and in many circumstances adapted quickly to that change. They adapted to their environment. And it's with that spirit we adapt to our environment, our changing environment of how we storytell. We storytell through new technology, and through oral histories all coming together. So I love VR and I started using VR because I really wanted to be able to immerse people more in my artwork. With shared experience comes a kind of collective understanding. I like to make people get an idea of the atmosphere and not just the idea of that you get from looking at something. It's four different environments in the end. Um, and first of all, we have the home side of the journey. So this will be in India. The second part of the journey is the journey itself through the ocean on the boat. What was that like? The third part is in Fiji. The arrival, how did these people feel when they arrive? And the fourth part is the diaspora. So what happens after that? We want to raise ideas about where these people ended up and how they've now become part of societies in other countries and how the history lives on. Girmit is a complex story, a story of shipping, of transportation, migration, economic botany, social history, all coming together to tell one story through different lenses. Girmit is a project that came to life during the pandemic and lockdown launched at the first ever virtual MOSFEST, the web for all, and created with artists across the world using the internet. And finally, to be inside the artwork by being inside the Gyramit experience allows all of the multidimensional aspects of the project 
to come to life. Nutcut, working in partnership with Play Labs to create Gyramit, it's been an exciting journey and one of the projects which is using access to Genimo for the first time. To find out more about the Gyramit experience, search Gyramit World.